Well, just three weeks ago, a California lawmaker who was upset about November's election wanted to mandate school training in how to spot fake news. Now, a different lawmaker, same state, has his own notions about how to improve education in the wake of Hillary Clinton's defeat. California Assemblyman Mark Levine is crafting a new bill that would require public schools in the state to teach about the subject of Russian hacking and how it supposedly swayed the last U.S. election. Assemblyman Levine joins us from Sacramento. Assemblyman, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you, Tucker. Glad to be on tonight. So I'm reading this and I'm thinking, well, okay, how would you feel if Donald Trump directed the Education Department to withhold funding from any state that refused to add to textbooks the claim that three million people voted illegally in the last election? You'd be mad. So it raises the question, why should politicians be involved in crafting textbooks? To me, the most important thing is that we need to understand our history to have a sense of what foreign policy we have in the future. So looking back decades from now, why are we on the course that we're on? If we look at the War of 1812, the Monroe Doctrine, the Marshall Plan, these are moments in history that really help us understand where America leadership, American leadership uh, has come from. We need to understand Russian interference in the 2016 election and its impacts on foreign policy to make sure that we have an American century ahead of us like we've had behind us when we're right. America is in full control of its destiny. Okay. I mean, I think you're right, actually. But the point is we don't understand the effect of Russia in the election right now. The War of 1812 was 200 years ago. Marshall Plan was 70 years ago. We have a vantage. We sort of, we get it now. We have perspective. We have no perspective on what happened. And basically what you're suggesting is adding propaganda from a politician into textbooks. And why should I be in favor of that? Well, the intelligence community had an assessment where they agreed that the Russian government and Vladimir Putin himself had the boldest move ever in their interference in our election. And this will have an impact on American foreign policy. But we have a president who is the least curious man on the planet about this issue. He wants to change the results of the election by saying that he won by a landslide. He wants to change the number of people that went to his inauguration with, you know, numbers that just cannot be substantiated, a loose affinity for the truth. And usually winners write the history books, but we need to make sure that the truth is in our that history books, and the history it's not books? papered over by the president. <laughs> okay. No, what you're doing is trying to get losers to write the history Well, look, I just want historians to write the history books. And I, That's I, right. I, I agree with you. I do. He says you're a nice guy. You seem like a reasonable person. I don't Thank want to you. attack you. But you know Appreciate as well as that. I that what you're suggesting is the addition of political propaganda into textbooks. You, you, there's nothing to substantiate your claims. We don't know Russia's intent. We don't know the extent to which they influence this election. Those are unknowable right now, and you know that as well as I do. How I agree with the intelligence community's some, assessment. Look, their assessment does not say that the, outcomes, the outcome of the election was affected by Russian interference. It doesn't say that, and you know it doesn't say that. And they also have no way of well, knowing the intent because they, it's they did not assess. They did not assess whether or not their interference had an outcome. They assessed whether or not the Russian government purposely, and Vladimir Putin himself, purposely intervened. If I were President Trump, I would condemn that, that interference, and I would say that they would be held accountable and that their impact would not be on foreign policy other than that. The president has done everything he can to deny it, but when he was confronted with the incontrovertible evidence of the intelligence community's assessment, even he had to agree that okay. they were involved. So you don't like to look, I, get, I know you're from Marin, right? You're from Marin County. Yeah, I get it. I, yes. I lived in California. Like, angry rich people come up to you at parties and say, you know, we've got to do something about this Trump character. He's terrible. He's wrecking the country. You know, I get the pressure that you're under. But I'm just going to ask I've you I've highly educated and highly engaged uh, no, voters. No, when you're sipping you're Chardonnay right and that. Ross, people are hassling you. And I get it completely. <laughs> but let me just ask you, how would you feel as a parent, and I think you are a parent, if your kids' textbooks had political claims that were not basically substantiated and they were clearly partisan and they were inserted by some politician you didn't agree with? Wouldn't that enrage you? There's so let's get into the weeds in on this. Yeah, let's get on in, in the weeds on this. So what would happen is that California has an instructional quality commission that looks at curriculum for the different subjects. They would make an assessment of how to include this. They would then make a recommendation that can be approved and accepted, revised, modified, or even rejected by the State Board of Education. And so that's how curriculum is developed. Politicians will not have a hand in what is written in our history books, and nor should they. <laughs> what do you mean? You're writing a bill to require this, so by definition, you have a hand in it. But let me just say, I mean, without being mean, I love, I love California. It's my home, home state, multi-generational. 
But it's, it's like not as nice as it was when I grew up there, and you know that. It's much poorer than it used to be. It's got a lot of problems, a lot of uneducated. It's got more poverty than any state in the country, and it's got some of the worst schools in America. And so should you, a smart, capable guy with power, be spending his time trying to appease the angry rich housewives of Ross with nonsense like this or like improving the state? Well, you shouldn't talk about your friends like that, but what we do have are excellent schools, the best public universities in the world, the sixth largest no. economy. Uh, the be we are leading the nation in job creation. Innovation comes from California, but where you live should not define whether or not you will be successful. This socioeconomic challenge, this inequality, is something that is as true in California as it is in Kentucky. Okay. We need to do more to That's fix that. That's true. And, and nationally, we all struggle with this. So if you're an African-American sixth grader, in California, and way less than 50%, I think it's more like 20%, past the math standards at that age. Is learning propaganda about <laughs> Russian interference in the election, is that really going to make you a better software engineer? Like, this is totally well, frivolous. We can learn history, and we can also, as I have since I was elected in 2012, reinvest in education, where I voted to increase spending by $14 billion, but also change the way we spend in education by making sure that your, the socioeconomic status does not define how much funding goes to your school, that in fact we can direct money to I where know, it's needed but, to improve outcomes. We have a lot more work to do, but we need yeah. to know the truth about American history. Okay. I don't think I'm convincing you, but you know that I'm right. I know that you do on some level. Assemblyman, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. My pleasure, Tucker.